my ideas on what happens when we die have changed over the decades. When I was a child, I was a Christian and believed in heaven, all that. It didn't really make any sense for me though. And also I found it really horrifying that uh, the uh, Seventh-day Adventist, and the Adventist doctrine was that animals didn't go to heaven. And that struck me as crazy. And also I didn't understand, even when I was a kid, you know, there's a whole notion of heaven with, with the lions lying down with the lambs. And I remember thinking as a kid, that's kind of a raw deal for the grass. And I didn't understand how, I, I understood as a kid that in order for one being to eat, another has to die. And grasshoppers eat grass and toads eat grasshoppers. I understood this. And so I didn't understand. Heaven didn't make any sense to me when I was a kid, but I believed in it because that's what I was taught. And then I, I went away from that. And through my 20s and 30s and 20s and 30s, really, I thought that basically when you die, it's as the song goes, boom, boom, out go the lights. And it's just it. And over the, uh, the time since, I have come to believe that when we die, there is, I don't know what, but there is something and there is a, what I know is that when I have had non-human animal friends die, that they have come to me in dreams, uh, generally three nights later and let me know that they're okay. And then they will come back over time to just say, hey, here I am, I'm okay. And one could argue, of course, that the dreams were made internally and that this is just me projecting and, 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 and having these sort of random firing of neurons in, 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 the, in the brain and me, me wanting so much to see that dog or cat that I interpret that. And of course I'm thinking about them, you know, three days after they died. So, so of course I'm going to dream about them. But one of the things that puts the, uh, that makes me question that and has made me question that for a long time is something that my friends and I call leakage, which is it has happened not infrequently that I have had other people's dreams. And what I mean by that is, for example, this, this is a real example that happened decades ago, but, but I've had this happen a lot of times. Um, I had a dream where everything in the dream made sense, except for in the middle of the dream, I almost got run over by a blue car. And I'm trying to figure out what do blue cars mean to me? I, my, first, my first car was a blue car. Does that have something to do with when I was 16? It's like I'm trying to think, but nothing makes sense. And... Then later that day, I was talking to a friend of mine who lives in Colorado, so that's what four states away. Um, and I told this friend the dream, and said, "But there was this one thing that didn't make any sense to me, which is that in the middle of the dream, having nothing to do with anything, I almost got run over by a blue car." My friend said, "Oh my God! Yesterday, I almost got run over by a blue car." And so that was, you know, that across time, I had no way of knowing that across time and space that came into the dream. And those things have happened to me often enough where there's a weird thing in a dream. That's the one I remember, but there are so many others where then I will talk to somebody a day or two later and they're like, oh, there were tadpoles in the dream. That's because I was out playing with tadpoles, you know, some, something from them. Um, and that's one reason I wrote my book dreams is because it was really clear to me that dreams were not something that simply came from inside, but they came from somewhere outside. And I was talking to my mom about this a few days ago. Um, and she was saying that one of the things that has made her know that when we die, there's, it's not just, the lights go out is that in the 50 years now since her father has died 
there have been many times when she has sensed his presence in a room and there have been times when she was facing difficult decisions and she would hear his voice giving her advice and you know i think we are there are not many cultures who have not had some uh, belief that something happens when we die. And they, a belief that when we die, it's not simply an extinguishment, does not have to be the sort of body-hating and earth-hating Christian heaven where the, you know, the earth is a veil of tears. This can still be where the action happens, but I don't know. And of course I will never know until I die and then I will either know or I won't know. But what I always, I sort of think now is that just as our body uh, slowly dissipates and becomes a part of everyone else so that, you know, when, when a dog dies, the dog, you know, when a dog friend dies, I, I, I put him outside and then, um, you know, various insects will eat him and vultures and he becomes part of them and he becomes part of the forest. And that happens over time, some parts very quickly and some parts more slowly. I think the same thing happens to our consciousness. I think it dissipates over time. Maybe one of the things that I loved about my book, Songs of the Dead, and I, I knew I was going to do this before I started the book, is there's a character in there who dies and is buried next to a river or yeah, next to a Creek. And I knew that as she, as her body decomposed, I wanted for her to be dreaming after she died. And I wanted for her to, for her dreams to slowly merge with the dreams of the land. And I had no idea how that would take place. I didn't know what that would look like. But when I wrote the book, I was pretty pleased with how it turned out. So I think, I think what I would like to do to end this thing is to uh, see if I can find one of those sections and read it. There are a few sections. Here's one of them. The first one, uh, Nika is dead, stabbed through the heart with a knife. Nika is dead and she is dreaming of rain. She is dreaming of rain coming down so hard she cannot see the trees outside her windows. She is dreaming of rain coming down to pound on the roof. She is dreaming of falling asleep to these sounds. She is dreaming of dreaming about it raining so hard she cannot see the trees outside her windows. She is dreaming of the rain and she wants to go home. Nika is dreaming of falling. She is dreaming of not being able to find the ground. She is dreaming of ravens flying toward her, then flying away with pieces of her in their beaks. She's dreaming of ants. She's dreaming of being carried away. She's dreaming of being carried home. She dreams of her mother the last time she saw her, her mother waving and waving until Nika can no longer see her. She dreams of her own body. She dreams of soil, of touching it with her fingers, her feet, then with the backs of her legs, her back, the back of her head. She dreams of tiny rocks and she dreams of the sounds of water moving through the night and into the sky. She dreams of the stars and of the sun. She dreams of a cloudless sky she cannot see. Nika is dreaming. She's dreaming of nights and days and the sounds of a stream. In her dream, she feels the breath of willows on her cheeks and inside her bones. She feels ponderosa pine roots pulsing beneath the ground and she feels the ground itself breathing its way into her. She no longer cares or even notices how long these breaths last. She merely takes each one in and lets it back out. 
She feels herself settling deeper into the spot where she lies, like a cat on a lap, like a river in a canyon, like being in bed after a hard day of playing when she was young. Nika is dreaming, and sometimes she sees other people, people she doesn't recognize. They walk like ghosts and sometimes notice her. Most often they don't. Nika is dreaming, and sometimes her dreams are filled with yearning, yearning for her mother and father, and yearning also for other things she has never known, yearning for things she cannot yet name and does not know if she ever will. Nika is dreaming, and she's filled with yearning. She's dreaming of fish longer than her arm and bigger than her thighs, and they're swimming shoulder to shoulder in a stream. She's dreaming of grizzly bears walking humpback along the bank. She's dreaming of the weight of ancient trees pressing down on her chest. And she's dreaming of fire and rain and snow and willows and more birds singing than she ever imagined existed. The songs fill her rib cage and leak out of her throat. And sometimes she cannot hear her own voice over the songs of the birds, the bears, the salmon, and the trees. Nika is dreaming. <laughs>